Hello everyone and welcome to the 46th episode of Navigating Tyburn at Times, the IWFM webinar series. Um, welcome to today's webinar. You can see on the screen there that it's about extinguishing burnout with Vicky O'Farrell. So as I just move the slides along, if technology allows me, there you go. As many of you are aware, I've, I've hosted many of our episodes. So I'm Peter Brogan, Head of Research and Insight. I'd like to welcome non-members, members to possibly their first episode and those returning um, for our weekly series. So, so welcome to the day. So we're going to talk about the issue around burnout. And again, like many of these sessions, we're going to make them as interactive and, and get you involved uh, as much as possible. So there, are, there is a poll. We also want your views and comments coming through as well. So today is about burnout. So obviously in light of hybrid working and all what we've experienced over the last year, year or so, is about burnout and what that actually means and how you can see the signs and how it links to your disc personality. So um, Vic, as people can see you on the screen there, and you did do an episode for us uh, previously around disc profiles, so we'd encourage uh, people to have a look at that. I'd like to say hello to Vicky O'Farrell, Managing Director at Motivational Voice Limited. So good afternoon, Vic, hope you're well. Um, just to get, get started, um, have I given the viewers, listeners, enough of a flavour of what you're going to be discussing today? Yeah, I think so. Um, burnout is a new word for me. We didn't really talk about that in the old place where we worked before this thing called COVID. You know, you heard of stress and occasionally burnout, but burnout is it's a, it's a buzzword right now and, and it's a real word and we need to understand what it means and the impact that it's going to have on individuals when they hit it. Yeah. So really looking forward to today's episode. Before I hand over to you, Vic, um, just want to remind viewers, listeners, this is recorded live, which I've probably demonstrated already. Um, but we would encourage you to send your questions through. We do have a Q&A session. So, Vic, I'm aware we've got a hard stop at one today. So uh, we've got a lot to go through. So I'd like to now hand over to Vic O'Farrell to take you through today's webinar. So, Vic, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Peter. Um, and I actually want to start off by referring back to uh, a recent survey done by IWFM, which showed that 44% of people are planning, I'm looking up here because I have to check that I've got the right figures, 44% of people are planning to work from the office three days or less when we come out finally of this lockdown. I mean, wow. That old way of working, yeah, that, that is gone. That is in the past. But what does the future look like? Do any of us actually really know what the future looks like? Well, we don't because we've never been there, have we? Have we ever had a COVID-19 pandemic that's actually changed the way we work? No. So we need to understand it. Now, um, I know there's been a couple of conversations or these webinars talking about our hybrid leadership and hybrid. There was one last week and I know a fellow speaker friend of mine, John Baker, did one a couple of weeks ago. So if you've missed any of those, please do go to the IWFM YouTube channel and subscribe. There is so many great webinars on there um, and this one will be on there too. So if you feel when you get to the end of this that someone else will benefit from watching it, please do go there too. So as Peter said and the screen said, I'm Vicky O'Farrell. I am the queen of behaviours. I'm an award-winning personality profiler. I spent 20 plus years in FM, but I've spent the last eight years in behaviours, making the workplace work by putting people first. Now, when we talk about burnout, I want to use the DISC system to understand how do we recognise burnout. Um, now, there's lots of other profiling places out there, the profiling tools, Myers-Briggs, Bellbin, Clarity 4D, lots of them. But I fell in love with DISC for its simplicity. So for this first few moments, I want to be able to take you through a high level, understanding your own style. Yeah. So you can understand how you could possibly be hitting burnout, how you can recognize your own symptoms and points for hitting burnout, but also how you can recognize colleagues and even friends or family, because we will all have those signs differently depending on our personality styles. 
So personality profiling, it's been around for hundreds of years. You could go back to 444 BC when Empedocles talked about the four elements that impact human behaviour, earth, air, fire and water. Even further back to 400 BC, and Hippocrates talked about the four fluids running through the human body, blood, black bile, yellow bile and phlegm. To be fair, the four fluids in my body in lockdown were gin, tonic, whiskey and wine. Don't know what yours were. But can you see, I mean, even the fours come up there, the, even the year 444 four, four BC 400, the four elements. There's always been something about the human behaviour. Bringing it to the modern day, in 1928, a gentleman called Dr. William Moulton Marston published his study of the emotions of normal people. And everyone back then was a bit like normal people. Why would you want to study normal people? You can't sell them lotions, potions, a half an hour on a therapy bed. But Dr. William Morton Marston studied the emotions of normal people. He was also accredited, along with his wife, for the polygraph, or the lie detector, as you'd commonly call it. And he also invented Wonder Woman. Well, okay, where's the link? Would you remember Wonder Woman had the lasso of truth, didn't she? And whenever she caught a villain in her lasso, the villain couldn't help but tell the truth. The truth which links back to the polygraph, the lie detector, which also then links back to the emotions of normal people. Because what the DISC system does is it strips away all of those other things that impact our personality. So role models, hereditary impact, life experiences, AI, that kind of thing. And it looks at our basic wiring. So I'm hoping that you've got a pen and paper, because I know all great people that come on to um, webinars have pens and paper. And I'd like to take you, first of all, through a high level understanding of what your dominant style is, because we need to understand what this is so we can recognize the signs when we hit burnout. Now, I am not a, I, I'm not a technophobe, but I don't, I don't have any whiz bangs or anything like that in terms of my presentation. I have good old fashioned pen and paper so that technology can't let me down. So what I'd like you to do on a piece of paper in front of you is to draw a line from the top to the bottom, a zero in the middle and a 10 at either end. I'm going to ask you a question. Imagine we were meeting for a cuppa. It's not going to be long now, is it? In fact, what I've actually done is I've actually brought my cup of tea along with me. So I'm going to ask you the question. Would you say more or less you were outgoing or reserved? Some of you will be, yeah, I'm outgoing. And some of you will say, mm, I know I'm reserved. And some of you will go, hmm, Vic, depends. And I completely get that because it will depend on who you're with and where you are, your environment. So your environment will impact on your behaviour. But for the sake of this exercise, think of the workplace. More or less, are you outgoing or reserved? And if you said you were outgoing, on a scale of zero to ten, how outgoing are you on this axis? Mark yourself a little dot. And if you said you were reserved, again, on a scale of zero to 10, on this axis, mark yourself along the line. And then there's the second question I wanna ask you. Draw a line through the center zero, 10's at either end. And this time I'm gonna ask you, we're having our cup of tea. I make it, feel, do I feel like I'm in the room with you? I feel like I am there. This time I'm gonna ask you, are you people focused? Or are you task focused? And what do I mean by that? You get to the end of the day and think about all the people interactions you've had, the phone calls, the Zoom meetings, or team meetings, or actually now we're back in the office, yeah, and actually physically being with people. I'm walking in and I'm distracted because there's people. I'm, you know, distancing with my two meters, but I'm seeing people. I've got on a train, there were people. You get to the end of the day and think about all of those people interactions. Or do you get to the end of the day and think about all the task interactions? 
the projects completed, the things ticked off your to-do list, a spreadsheet perhaps started. And now we are back in the workplace. You get into the workplace and yes, there are people and you might acknowledge the people, but you don't get distracted by them. You're focused on getting to your desk to complete your tasks. That would make you task focused. So on our piece of paper here, a scale of zero to 10, on the right hand side here, if you're people focused, on the right hand side, on a scale of zero to 10, how people focused are you? And on the left hand side, a zero to 10, how task focused are you? So what you should now have is a dot on this axis and a dot on this axis. Now, if you said you were outgoing and task focused, this top left hand quadrant is where your dots will be. If you said you were outgoing and people focused, you'll have two dots on these axis, you'll be in this top right hand quadrant. Still people focused, but on the reserved side, yeah, you'll have a dot somewhere here. And reserved but task focused, you'll have a dot somewhere here. That is the world of DISC. It's as simple as that. Dominant, influence, steadiness, and compliant. And the other thing I loved about DISC was you can recognize not just yourself, but other people by some really simple key words. So the dominant people, lots of other D words coming, they are driven, they are decisive, they are demanding of themselves as well as others, they are very direct. They are the doers. And when I say decisive, if you need an answer, they're the kind of people that will just give you an answer. Might not be the one you want, but they will just give you the answer. They're determined. So then we're outgoing, people focused, I, influence. These are the influential people. They are inspirational. They see themselves as inspirational as well as others seeing them as inspirational. They are interested in people. They are into everything. They are interactive. They are impulsive. If you put a dot in that quadrant top right hand, I bet you've got something in your wardrobe that's still got a label on it. And they're also impressionable. These are our eyes, outgoing people focused. Then we come down to the S style, steadiness. These are our stability corners. These are the people that have the um, status quo feeling, not the 80s rock band, by the way, but you know, it's about peace and harmony. It's the security. It's keeping everything how calm and safe. They're also sensitive. And I don't mean like, oh, ouch, that hurt. I mean, sensitive as in sensitive to other people's feelings. They make great diplomats because it's all about the team. And then finally, C, compliance. This is our correct and conscientious corner. They are consistent. They are um, critical and creative thinkers. They're very careful and they will consistently deliver. It's about rules and regulations. So you've got your own style. You will be in one of these quadrants. But just by using some of those words, can you recognise some of the colleagues around you? Because when we talk about burnout, whilst we want to recognise it for ourselves, we are coming back into the workplace. We want to be able to recognise it for our colleagues too, because that's key. Now, when we talk about, I'll have another cup of tea. Have you, have you got tea there? Or maybe you're a coffee drinker. I don't know. When we talk about burnout, how do we recognize that? So each of those four letters has what I call a greatest fear. And I don't mean like a fear of spiders because that's a phobia. I mean a fear. So let's look at each of those. The D style has a fear of failure, which is why they are decisive, direct, demanding of themselves as well as others, the doers, the driven. We've got to succeed, we've got to succeed. And that's fine because there'll be an odd day when they're out of flow and they might be extra D. 
and we'll come back to being in and out of flow. The I style, their greatest fear is loss of popularity. Yeah, they don't want to miss out. I styles probably have FOMO more than any of the other styles. It's about being here, there and everywhere, doing this, everything with everyone, being inspirational, being interested in people. The eyes are probably the first ones that want to get back to the office. Our S style, they have a fear of change because it's about stability. So actually the S's probably will get more anxiety, I would say, than the other styles in this way that we come out to work. We need to have a roadmap. We need to have a plan. Don't just be saying on Friday, right, back to the office Monday. No, we need a plan. But because they have that fear of change and just that instant change, they might be a bit more sensitive to it. Like, oh, hold on. And the C stars, their greatest fear is criticism without validation. You know, but this is this is how we were doing it. This we're, we're being correct. It's being a critic. They're critical and creative thinkers because it's about doing things correctly. You know, it's about finishing it on time, on budget. So when we look at their fear, again, out of flow, they might just do it the odd time. They might be a little bit more cold towards being correct. But what does this mean, Vic? Well, let's look at, um, and if you've seen any of these webinars that I've done before, whether it's with IWFM or you've seen anything that I've done on my YouTube channel, when I talk about being in flow and being out of flow, we can look simply about the fact that we all go out of flow some point, you know, in the week, the month, the year. We all go out of flow because being in flow is the simple things. Everything's going right, isn't it? You know, you've got up in the morning, your partner's made a brew, the kids have all got their stuff ready to go to school, you're back to the office, the train was on time, there was no traffic, you know, you had a parking space, everything's in flow. You got to work, everything's in flow. And when out of flow, when those stress things hit us, the time when actually there was no brew because there's no milk and the kids can't find their PE kits. Oh, and now I'm late. And then the train was cancelled or, you know, there was traffic and there was traffic lights. That's what takes can take us out of flow. And we can think about that when we're going back to the office. But let me put it another way for you. When things are going right, and this isn't just about having a brew in the morning with your partner, yeah? This isn't just about getting to work on time, but the actual, the, the work, the, the, the pace of work, the workflow, and the actual body of work that you're doing, is it becoming overloaded? It, it, is there so much going on? Because when we're coming back to the office, have you got a plan? Has your organization, got that roadmap to go back to the office. Because when we're gonna go back to the office, yeah, when we've got the plan, we can blow up our balloon, can't we? What do you mean, what do you mean by that bit? You know, everything's going right. You get, when things are going right, you get to blow the balloon, yeah? So, um, okay, we've got a date to go back to the office. <sighs> blow my balloon up. Um, we've got a date when the different teams are coming back to the office. <sighs> blow my balloon up. Flexibility and people are number one. Great. We've got plans in place. We've got decisions made. And now I've got my balloon. And that's great. So when I go back to the office or when I'm going to work from home, I've got my lovely balloon. We've all got our lovely balloon that we walk around with. Yeah. And um, a bit like, uh, what was the film? Uh, Winston, that was it. <laughs> like the, the football Winston. Draw your little face on it. And that's great. But when we start hitting burnout, sometimes we can overfill our balloon. And I'll talk about how you recognize those signs when you overfill the balloon. So a D style. Now these people are the, the, the driven force. And I'm not saying that every D style wants to be the CEO, that's not the case. But D stars want to be in charge of things, yeah? They want to drive things forward. They want to get things done. You know, they work at a, a, a fast, determined pace. And that's absolutely fine. But when that's overused, how does that come across? It can actually come across as a bit rude. 
perhaps a bit pushy, even could I say arrogant. Now, when you're out of flow because there was no milk and the train was late, yeah, you go out of flow for a, for a moment, for a day. But do you ever recognize that you're going out of flow more? And it wasn't the fact that there wasn't milk and it wasn't the fact that the train was late. But actually what I found is that I've become more, de more demanding, more decisive, more direct. Can you recognize a colleague thinking, oh, something's not right with them. You know, they're, they're becoming ruder. You know, they're becoming really pushy. And I know that there's no pressure on, there's no project going on at the moment. So what's going on with them? They put more air in that balloon is what they've done. And we need to recognize that. We need to recognize it if we are a D star for ourselves, but we need to recognize it if we've got a colleague that's D style that is putting too much air in their balloon. So that's the D star. What about the I style? Now, the I style of influence. So they are the optimistic, the energetic, the imaginative, persuasive people that come in the office. As I say, probably the I-stars, the ones that want to get straight back to the office quicker. I know that because I am one, if you had not already been able to tell. But when overused, yeah, when that I-style is overused, it can all become a little bit jokey, a little bit, you know, unrealistic, perhaps a bit emotional. You, you could even use the word unprofessional to some who are opposite to the eye style, even irritating. And sometimes you think, oh, you're, you know, being extra happy and jolly. I know we're coming back to the office, but there's no need to be so excited about it. And actually they constantly being emotional and excited and inspirational for everyone. And if you are that person, are you thinking I'm, I'm, I'm overcompensating? The S style, our steadiness, our team player, yeah, the ones that make great diplomats because they see things from everyone else's side. They are great listeners, they're amiable. But actually when that's overused, because they have a fear of change, they could be resistant to change, even more sensitive to the change, like they are unwhile to change. And where, as in the old way of working, you, you might think as an S style, if you're looking at a colleague going, oh, I know you was always a bit resistant to change, but like you, you're, you're digging your heels in here. You know, this is a new way of working. None of us know what the future holds. We've just got to make a plan and we've got to go with it. But you, you don't even want to talk about it. No. Don't want change. Yeah. You know, to the fact that they perhaps shy away from it. So it's overusing their F style and their steadiness. And our C style that demand the accuracy and the high standards. It's all about being orderly and, and logical. When that is overused as being critical and creative thinkers, it can actually come across as a bit clinical perhaps even a little bit cold, you know, where, again, old way of working, you think, okay, I know you want facts and figures, but seriously, you are, it's paralysis of analysis at the moment because you're just asking constantly for detail. They're overusing their strengths because the strength of different styles, when overused, can actually become a weakness, not for the team, but for the person. And this isn't about labeling people. This isn't about putting people in boxes. It's not even an excuse for bad behavior. It's about recognizing, understanding, respecting our differences, but recognizing, understanding, and respecting when someone else is out of flow or recognizing when we are out of flow. Now, it could be that your colleagues, friends, family, actually tell you. And just say, you know, God, you're never so demanding these days, aren't you? I know you want some decisions made, but you know, it's like every day. Or I style of like, God, 
you're a bit over, you know, everything's so excitable in your world, isn't it? You know, you're like Tigger on speed. It's like, wow. And the S star is like, oh, very reluctant to change these days. And the C star, oh, never, I never, 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 never known you want so much detail. Now, if your friends and family recognize this, or you're starting to recognize it, this could be the sign that you're going to hit burnout. So that's great because you're recognizing it before you get there. And this is the key. We've got to recognize it before we get there because once we're there, it's a, it's a slower road on recovery. You know, it is time out, it is time off, it is unplug the batteries and recharge. So how do you have those conversations? Because if I recognize myself, that's fine. And I'm gonna tell you a story at the end of this about how I did actually recognize myself. But how do you have those conversations with people who are of a different style to you? Well, one thing not to do, can I say, is don't have it via email. Email is not a communication tool to start to resolve things like this. You could have a video call. Yeah, you could have a phone call. Or if you're in the office with someone, you could be at the tea point and just have a conversation with them. Now, some of those styles probably might not even want to. You tell a D style they're becoming demanding, yes, and you tell an I style that, oh my God, you're extra happy today. I know, brilliant, isn't it? You tell it's the S style, it's like, you seem to be a lot more sensitive. Reserved won't, uh, uh, the answer. And C styles, you want, you want more data, data. Yes, we need that to be correct. If you're not able to have the conversation with them, you, you've recognized it. You need to be able to have a conversation with another colleague, perhaps a colleague of similar style, so that they can have the conversation with them. Because when we've, when we've got to that stage of recognition, like I say, you can put things in place. So how does a D stop being demanding and direct? Well, that's because we as humans can tell them. You know, when, when they turn and go, I know, I'm sorry, I'm being so demanding today, I need... You just need to tell them, say, can I let you know when I feel that you're being more demanding than normal? Yeah, OK, fine. Tell me. And the good thing with the D is, is you can tell them because they're like, oh, OK, next. The I start when you just say, do you know what? It's just so much energy. I love all your energy. I want to bottle it. But actually, it's quite exhausting today. Oh, right. OK, I'm probably a bit over the top. F style, sensitive. You're being a little bit more sensitive today. Oh, really? OK, can I tell you when I, I've asked something and, and you're perhaps being more sensitive? And the C star, can I just let you know when you've wanted too much data, too much information, too much correctness? And then those conversations can happen and people can start to actually put plans into place for themselves and you can put plans into place for yourself. Because the one thing that we don't want to do when we go back to the balloon, yeah, when we're overusing our style, we're making a huge balloon. And you know what balloons are like when you overfill them, the skin gets really tight, doesn't it? That balloon, that film is incredibly tight. Yeah. So it's like a pressure cooker and one too many puffs or even worse, any little prick can burst that balloon. That is not what we want to happen. So we have to recognise when we're getting to the stage of overfilling our balloon. Now I'll tell you the story of when I overfilled my balloon. And I'm just going to reach over here. To this thing a mobile phone. So I am iStar. And at the beginning of this month, I was absolutely inspirationally, interactively, 
influencing everything. I was, social media was going, I, I was getting posts that were going viral. You know, I put one poll out on LinkedIn and I had 15,000 views and 350 votes on it. I was like, wow, this is great because, you know, this is what um, I, I thrive off. Yeah, we could, everything's going great. Business was going well. I had a mastermind that was booked. My programs were getting booked. In fact, I've grown my business in lockdown because we've gone global and I've picked up clients everywhere. So the I style in me was being overused. And then I went on, I don't know if any of you are on this a new thing called Clubhouse, but I went on a morning of Clubhouse and they were talking about burnout. And I thought, oh, this would be great. Be interesting to hear this. And um, there were six experts on there and they were all very different styles and they were all talking about their experience of burnout. And one lady was talking about how great everything was and how amazing life had been and that everything was growing. And then she hit burnout. I was sitting thinking, that's me. Well, hold on a minute. Could I actually be hitting burnout? But how could I be hitting burnout? Everything's going amazing. Why would I think that's burnout? Well, actually, it was because I'd realised I had become a slave to this. Because I have a fear of loss of popularity as an eye style, I was on all of the social media platforms. And whilst I use a scheduler to post out there, it's the comments, it's the likes, it's the pings, it's the dings. And my phone was constantly going off. I was on everything. So on this clubhouse, if, if you don't know it, it's a, um, a, a verbal uh, communication tool. Um, and I put my hand up to go on stage and I'd gone up to, to talk. And they uh, said, oh, welcome to the stage, Vicky. You know, what would you like to say? And I, un I unmuted my mic. And in front of the 200 people in this room, I burst into tears. And I just actually lit the match of burnout. And I couldn't even talk because I just recognised they'd been talking about me. And I came off that phone and I'm being vulnerable now because I could have clients watching this. If you've known me, you know, this is not me. But I sat on my chair in the office and I sobbed. I uncontrollably sobbed for about 10 minutes because I just realised I'd struck a match and that I'd lit the fire of burnout and it had been built up over these last three months of where I was going. I turned off the computer, I looked in my diary, I moved the appointments that I had and I shut down my screen. I took my phone. I deleted all my social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Clubhouse, deleted it. And I took a day to just sit and read a book and disappear from this screen. Because what we have to recognise in this last year is how much time we've spent looking at a flipping screen. Now, yes, when we were in the office, in the old way of working, we worked on screen, didn't we? But you didn't sit there from whatever time in the morning, eight o'clock till six o'clock, staring at the screen, yeah? You might have had meetings, so you had a break from your screen. You went to a meeting room, or you went to a coffee shop, or you went somewhere and you met face to face, so you had a break from the screen. But you're not having a break from the screen. We are going to have a break from the screen when we start going back to lockdown. But when I got to the end of the day, so having deleted all of that off on the Thursday, I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll be fine. I'll be right to go in there tomorrow. It's coming back to my little story of burnout. But I woke up on that Friday morning and I just thought, I don't want to, I don't want to go in the office. And I'm blessed with the office setup that I've got at home. I, thought, I don't want to go in the office. The thought of going in the office was, was really starting to make me sob again. And I said to my husband, I said, 
can, what can I do for you today? Can I, can I work for you today? <laughs> and he turned around and he said, well, actually, he said the, um, the truck and the van have both got their MOTs booked in today. He said, so if you could take those, that'll save me coming off site. He said, that'd be brilliant. Really save time saving. I said, I can do that. I can do that. So I did it. I took a, 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 the, a truck to be MOT'd. Um, and whilst I was waiting for the MOT, I had my phone with me because I always carry that for an emergency, but I had no social media on there. Normally, the first thing I do, and you see it, don't you? How many times do people sit down, open the phone, click? And it's like, oh no, I couldn't do that. So I sat for half an hour, I found a bit of sunshine, and I just sat and was still and was quiet and listened to the world. Now for an eye style, no, we want to be interactive and interested in other people. And I didn't do that. And then the afternoon I took the van and I did exactly the same and it was, it felt great. I didn't go on social media. In fact, I didn't put the social media back on my phone until that Sunday evening. I had a break, a complete break, which is unlike me, but I'm not unlike I styles as well. And I can only talk about it in terms of I style because that's my style. When I put my social media apps back on my phone, for whatever phone you have, it always says allow notifications. Don't allow. And I still don't have them allowed. If I want to find out, then I have to go into the app or I, I log on to it on, on the website and that's fine. But how can you recognize that? That's I style. How do you make sure that a D star doesn't light the match because they don't become so demanding that they explode? Well, the other way you can recognize it, a bit like I recognized the fact that suddenly I had gone from happy, inspirational, interested in people to sobbing on my office chair for 10 minutes. Because the other thing that a style can do is flip. And what do I mean by flip? So the demanding, direct, decisive, dominant D can suddenly become the, you do it. Hmm. And I don't mean just once, you know, recognize it. It's not, it's not a sudden outflow because there was no milk in the fridge. This is, I'm recognizing a change here. You know, it's one day, two days, three days, a week, two weeks. Suddenly my D style is just, well, you do it, you do it. Doesn't matter, we, oh, dismissive. The I style, when the I style does a flip, what, what does that, what does it mean? Well, they become snappy. They, they become emotional, they don't care. Yeah, it's not about eyes. Eyes are interested in people. I'm not interested, I'm not interested in what you've got to say today. Hmm. You always wanted to tell a story. You always want to hear a story. What do you mean you don't care today? Our S style, our stability and our steadiness corner, an S style when it flips, well, they explode. You know, the S style that, that's always maintained at level playing field suddenly explodes, you know, and snaps at you. Whoa, okay, S style, that's not what I was doing. And our C style, they start dropping detail. Yeah, it's always been about consistent, correct, cautious, careful. They start dropping detail. You see uh, coming, coming back to you with it and they've made a mistake. Okay, we all make mistakes. But when C stars make mistakes constantly, something's not right. And it is a key sign that you are about to light the match when you change your behaviours and not, I say it again, because there's no milk in the fridge when the behaviors change and they change and they change it's not a day but it's like i've noticed actually and we need to pick it up have a cup of tea and have the conversation and if you don't feel you're able to have the conversation you need to find a colleague that can have the conversation because if you hit burnout, if you strike the match, yeah, and I struck the match and I literally took, you know, two days out of work and the weekends, so I took four days out 
and I'm back to being me. In fact, people have been sending me messages going, where's all your Insta Reels? Where's your LinkedIn videos? I'm like, I'm here. I'm still here. I just took some time out. And what I want to say to people, for you watching or for anyone else that you think could be hitting burnout, is it's okay to admit that you feel that you're going to do that by turning around and saying, I feel I'm going to burn out, I'm going to hit that wall, I just take, just give me a couple of days, yep, however long it takes for you, but before you strike the match, the time is much shorter. Once you've struck the match and you've lit that burnout, recovery time is longer. And it's not about the financial impact on a business, this is about the people impact on the business, because we don't want to lose those people. Now, when I talked about screens earlier, didn't I? And actually, it was a conversation that Peter and I had had. And I just realised, Peter, I didn't run the poll. <laughs> I didn't do the poll, did I? Indeed, Peter? Vic. Is it still relevant or? It, it is. It's very relevant still. I've got a big <laughs> word here that says poll. Oh, I, I'm human. Yeah, I'm human. And it's I... live, folks. And it's live. So keeping it real. <laughs> So I think we have got a poll. So if we can ask Lucy and Nicole in the background to launch the poll, as promised, that'd be great. <clears throat> yeah, no oh. worries. So it's in progress at the moment. <laughs> Just yeah. to, everyone should see it on screen. Uh, so uh, you've got obviously D for dominance, I for influence, S for steadiness and C for compliance. And I can see everyone's quickly making their decision, which is good. So a few more seconds, there's a few of you that still haven't answered. I've got a big red word here that says poll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were still in the flow, we didn't want to interrupt. There we go, that's <laughs> everyone answered. <laughs> so you should okay. see that on your screen. Um, hopefully you can see it, it's quite a nice split actually. And you know what? I don't think I've ever done one of these where it's all been one or two letters. And we talk about diversity a lot, don't we? We talk about we need diversity in the workplace. It's not just about the diversity of uh, gender, ethnicity, and that's the kind of thing. We also need diversity in terms of personalities because we all have strengths to bring to the team and we just need to recognise each other's strengths. Thank you for that. Um, and apologies, I didn't run that poll. When it's, it's an interactive session, yeah? It's not about me having a cup of tea with you in your front room or wherever your office where you're sitting with. It's about you filling in the, the, the poll as well. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I was in flow there because I, I, it's, I get really passionate about the fact, and I probably more so because I struck the match myself at the beginning of April. But I was able to put that fire out really quickly because I'd recognised it in myself. I took time out, I shut my phone down. We've spent so much time on screens, yeah? And even, even in the evening, yeah? So I spent my whole day on a screen, and then in the evening, you know, husband would be like, something like, oh, should we catch a box set on Netflix or something? You know, I've binged, watched all of them. I haven't finished Line of Duty, so please don't give that away. But I'm literally always on a screen, or no, I'm gonna read a book. What do I read my book on? Oh, I read my book on my phone. I'm touching a screen again. Yeah, I've actually bought some physical books so that I can take a break because we need to take a break. And, and that, that's no matter what your personality style is, too much time on a screen will impact you as an individual. So how do we recognise that? Well, I hope those this last 45 minutes has given you an indication of how you can not just recognise, obviously, what your style is, how you can start to recognise those colleagues around you, but how you can recognise when they're going out of flow, when they're filling their balloon to bursting point and having that conversation with them. 
I want to open it up for some Q&A because I did say to Peter, I do need to be promptly off at one o'clock today, but I'm really conscious. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that poll. Really, that's really bad, isn't it, Peter? No, it isn't, Vic. It's there. And uh, we've got a very engaged audience that have stuck around for that poll because I can see the numbers in the background. So you'd be pleased to know. I um, see, yeah, no one's dropped out. So <laughs> So we would encourage questions to come in. Um, as you can see on the screen there, that that's where we will go back to it. But some of the social media platforms Vic did refer to, uh, that's where she can be contacted at. Vic, anything else to add on that? that from from that slide that people are seeing at the moment so we'll go back to that later so we have got questions coming in and want to thank the audience that have sent some through um Vic I think you alluded to we've got an email well question here from Claire around uh hybrid working and the impact of burnout um I think you've resonated about the joy of social media as well as technology uh, with hybrid working, how how easy would it be to recognise burnout, particularly now if you've got a fragmented workforce in terms of some working from home and some some on site? Is that going to bring burnout as a bigger risk? How will you know for those that are remotely working is basically Claire's question. So if we think of just the two different sides to this, so if we think of outgoing and reserved, yeah recognize when outgoing people become even more outgoing that is a sign and your reserved people like come and become more reserved because it's really hard when you're trying to have a team meeting and you're you're trying to have your you're in a room i know you know what it's like even when we used to do um teleconference you know you had a meeting and someone dialed in you get to the end of the meeting and you thought oh i didn't even ask the person on the phone <laughs> If they had a point or they wanted to go, it, it's it's understanding that we've got to, as leaders, know what our team style is so that we can allow them the space to come in. Because if your D becomes more demanding in a meeting or they actually pull back from a meeting, you know, it's recognizing those stars. And when we're hybrid, like I say, we have got to be even more, we've got to um up tune our own senses to our teams to recognize it and make sure that we keep communication i mean that's the key for me i keep picking up my mug but it's about having it's about communicating you know I'm sure is we've got another question in from michael um sim simply around and it's not simple is Vic, um it, it, I think that your personal story there and experiences has resonated a lot with the audience in terms of the questions coming through. But you recognise the burnout and it was a trigger through a discussion on a social media platform. Uh, quite a personal question, so if you're happy to answer it. How will you ensure that doesn't happen to you again? So the whole thing for me and it started becoming the fact that I was a slave to my phone yeah and I'm constantly on it so like I put my social media apps back on my phone I haven't allowed notifications and the temptation to is great but I'm like no I will now check my social media you know if I'm having breakfast and I'm on my own I might check it then I might have it lunchtime or I might while well, I'm making a brew you know I might check it then I don't sit on it all the time and I won't do it because I know I will overload myself again and I could potentially hit burnout again. Uh, well, I haven't actually put Clubhouse back on. I've, I've, I haven't deleted my account, but I'm like, I do not need to spend time in that at the moment. No, it depicts of an image I've seen and many people can Google it is the iPhone where it's strapped, it, it's depicted so it could be male or female of an iPhone round and a lump of chains round that. So literally, the, I, I think that's what a lot of people are experiencing. And you just had the experience when we're all on trains, the amount of people just looking into their phones. So, uh, yeah, a powerful message right there. Um, the questions are flooding through, Vic, so I want to give justice to our audience and thank you again. We've got a question here from the individual, I won't name just in case, but um, I, I have been throughout COVID and feeding burnouts so have been quite open. How do you, uh, 
how how do you step back if management are not aware so i think this is possibly an individual many of our individuals join us that actually might be at that brink but aware that they may be feeding it but the individuals that may be in control sounds terrible me saying that but the management level how how do you make them aware what well, what's the process who do you go and speak to if you're that individual that is that fear of telling people your weaknesses, I guess, is the question that's coming from the individual. One thing we've got to do is we've got to take away any stigma that burnout is a weakness. Yeah, it's not because we can all hit burnout. You need to be able to have a conversation with your line manager. And if your line manager isn't listening to you, yeah, you need to have a conversation with a, perhaps a colleague who can recognize it for you, you know, to do that sidestep? Or do you speak to HR? You know, where is your best relationship and who can you best talk to? Because if not, then you do need to take some time out, you know, and, it, and it's having that conversation where you say, I need to take time out. I need a day off. I need a couple of days off because I, I am no good to man or beast if I burn out. So let me take the time to call this fire. Does and if uh, questions come in, that, that's great. In terms of the questions that come in around a lot around management, uh, as a manager myself, and admittedly I've got a small team, which I appreciate my, my, one of my colleagues is on this webinar, so she's probably better to answer this for me. But what techniques for a manager would you suggest to ensure this happens? You know, for the signs, but are there any simple techniques? I guess it goes back to getting to know your staff, but actually generally asking someone, how are you? But you actually wait for the response because I've seen it in my past experience. So many people will say, well, how are you? But they don't actually wait for the response. They're almost halfway down the corridor. We've probably all experienced those individuals. But is there any techniques, tips, training that you would suggest that me as a manager and others on on the webinar might think yeah i really get this but i would really like to know more is there something that i could do as an individual to ensure that my staff don't reach this and it's it's having again a conversation but as a manager yeah or or as a leader about asking your people the question and listening yeah and asking them, and if you're not happy with what they've said, or you don't think that they're perhaps giving you the whole story, perhaps think about how you can ask it in a different way. You know, make your make your people feel that they can come to you with anything. Because for the person who wrote on there about management, you know, if they don't hear me, it's like, you have to make them hear you. Because recovery from burnout is way longer than actually extinguishing that fire at the start. And that is what we've got to make management and boards and anyone in a senior position, we've got to make them realize this can happen to anybody. It's not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of overload. And we have to be able to um, have a conversation and be able to have that open conversation. Because as I always say that, you know, make the workplace work by putting the people first. Because facilities management, we're great at managing the building, but the people are what comes first. And I guess um, there's a couple of questions coming, but uh, about techniques, about ensuring that, and, and even some people are suggesting, and it's been actually on a couple of our episodes before about meeting siestas, where you have got this back-to-back -back process at the moment of meetings and various other bits of looking at a screen. Um, without putting organisations, naming organisations, do you personally feel for your clients, could organisations do a lot more to, to stop this level of burnout or looking at screens? Could they start adopting methods? Like you've admitted, you would probably not be in a meeting room from 8am till 6 o'clock at night. But virtually at the moment, there are many individuals that I know personally that are back-to-back -back meetings on various platforms is there more that organisations could do to ensure that they've got a culture that that doesn't happen? I know it's quite a difficult question, but I'm sort of summarising a load of questions that have come in, Vic, around that. No, no, it's fine. Um, I mean, one good thing is to also, uh, I know you said it before we actually went live about, you know, you blocked your teams today so that people can't book in it. You know, 
block yourself some time in your diary so that you can take time out. And I'm also a great advocate of actually going back to a phone call. Oh, do we need, everyone just jumps on a video these days, don't they? But could we, could we do this over the phone? Because it's quicker even over the phone, you know? And if you need to have a, a conversation, and I know it's hard, you can't write notes, but actually, can you have a walking conversation? Can you say to someone, let's have, a, let's have it over the phone, it's midday um, and I'm gonna be walking, yeah? And I know if you need to make notes and stuff, but actually if you're both having the conversation and then you can follow it up with an email to catch up any, de any details that you had, find a different way just to not look at that screen. How can you do it differently? Hmm. And do you think in if the year's time that we, we still be looking for episodes around burnout? Is this something that will over time get worse? Uh, we're on the brink of uh, furloughing being stopped later in the year. Um, economics to, economists tell us that the um, economic environment might change and we might see more redundancies, jobs which then might link for more for less for people in employment. How big of a risk is this to, to the, the UK economy and those CFOs up and down the country that will, will worry about this? Because a sick worker is quite an expensive worker if you looked at it from that perspective. So how serious is this topic and how, how it should be taken seriously? And do you, do you see a, a tide shifting on this, that health and wellbeing, which is one of our key pillars at the IWFM, we are looking at this, it is getting higher, higher up boards agendas because of the risk to the individual, of course. But let's be crude about it. The costs associated with a worker off or feel basically. Yeah. It, it, well, it's not just about, you know, the, the, the risk to the individual, the, the board are at risk of it. You know, board members are at risk of it. All humans are at Very risk great. of it. And <laughs> without without having a crystal ball, I'm not a futurist. I believe it's a real thing now. Will it be in a year's time? I'm not a futurist, I couldn't tell you that, but I believe in the next six months is key because like you say, when we come fully out of lockdown here in England, when we are back in the workplace and if people haven't put a roadmap in place, if people aren't being flexible, flexibility is the key, but don't give your staff choice and then take it away by saying, well, we know you have a choice to come in. Um, you can come in three days a week as long as they're Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. I mean, it's like, no, don't give people choice and take it away. We've got to understand that humans are human and we all have emotions going on and we need to make sure that we manage and respect our differences. I think that'd be interesting. And we've discussed that on our hybrid working episodes about this power of choice. We've all we've all had choice. You could go as back as far as a referendum only a few years ago when we gave people choice and see what the consequences are. So without going political, I think obviously hybrid working is a massive issue for many organisations and that balance of choice for the individual, which many organisations up and down the country as well as globally are trying to establish now. So I'm aware of time. I want to say thank you for those individuals individuals that put uh, questions through. As promised, we have said an hour for people looking at this on screen, so I do see a comment on that, so thank you for that, but we will be recorded. Another For another individual, this will go on the IWFM website under our Navigating Turbulent Time series, so again, please look back, cascade to colleagues and friends. I've referred back to the slide there, Kindly Vic's done this webinar for us, it is part two of an episode where our first episode went into DISC personalities in greater detail, so please look at that episode that is on the website. But Again, if you want to reach out to Vic, again, uh, please do. Uh, contact details are there on, on most of the social media platforms, including Clubhouse, which I'm on, which uh, I can understand that that can be quite addictive as well, like many of these platforms. And it's just making sure you get that balance right. But Vic, a massive thank you for today. A stellar episode, in my humble opinion. Um, and we um, thank you again and hope to see you on a future episode of our Navigating Turbulent Time series. So thank you for that. Thank you, Peter. So we're moving on as I just um, close my screens down. Yes, um, as promised and, and on many occasions of our webinars, we just remind you of where 
Uh, all this content, including this webinar, will be housed. It's on dedicated content hubs, research reports, good practice guides and guidance notes. You find that on the Insight Hub. And as I've already mentioned, today's episode uh, 46 will also be found there, as well as the previous episodes and also the uh, first episode that Vic did us for us on disk profiling. So please find it there. Um, again, as the trigger of COVID-19, as, as we do see some light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully these pages are regularly updated uh, with latest policy industry return to work. So please look out for that in terms of guidance. Um, and as I say, they're regularly updated. So please, please look out on our website for that. Again, with our impact awards, it's that time time of year really where we're already looking at that. So again, we're looking for entries. So the deadline there, as you can see on your screens, is the 4th of May. So uh, yeah, where's April gone? Yes, that's next week, folks. Um, 11th of October, again, is where the grand event will be happening. So please look out, as you can see, the links there for further details about our impact awards. But please enter now, I encourage you, uh, if you can, an entry deadline is the 4th of May, as you see there and already mentioned. Again, in terms of IWFM conference, I've mentioned this a couple of times on our previous episodes. We've launched our first or announced our first two speakers. Again, I think the theme is um, remaining positive is essentially emerging stronger tickets are available so it is a hybrid event to use that word again in terms of um, virtual and physical so I encourage you to have a look at the program there will be announcements on the other speakers as well as the the breakout sessions that will make up that day so so please look out for um, our conference and please book if you can but last but not least, um, for, for the viewers, listeners that join our regular episodes, I recognise it's an hour of your time. Yeah, it's an hour of your time looking at your screen, which sort of um, contradicts elements of today. But hopefully you've learned a lot today about the triggers of, of burnout, what to look out for, how to look at the different dispersonalities of your, yourself, as well as staff and people you work with or even friends. Um, and family really to understand uh, any signs from that. So from that point of view, not always in the work environment. Um, as I like to mention at this point, we do have a post survey, a, a very quick survey, just for you to fill in, not only to rate today's episode, what you thought of it, but more importantly, future episodes in terms of content. And we've really acted and listened on the feedback we've had on our previous episodes in terms of driving our uh, webinar series going forward in terms of the content and what, what you as members, non-members would like to listen to and, and hear from in terms of content. So please fill that in. Um, next week's episode will be announced on Friday. So please look out for that. That will be episode 47. So again, almost to the magical 50, but please have a look at that. Uh, but last but not least, I just want to say a massive thank you again to Vic. Um, and viewers, listeners that have joined us today and uh, hope to see you soon or hear from you soon on our next episode. So please take care, keep safe and hope to see you soon. Okay, cheers, bye.